Hi guys, how are you? Welcome to episode seven of season two of Living Well. We are focusing on songwriters still just because I truly believe in the power of songwriting and how it helps us tap into our emotions and tap into how we're feeling, which is sometimes a really hard thing to express. I'm also hosting a songwriting workshop. It's called Right From The Heart. If anyone would like details on that, we'll put all the links below. Let's get to our guest for tonight. A Virginia native, she moved to Nashville, Tennessee to pursue a career in songwriting and has since proven to be quite the driving force. She has had songs recorded by Keith Urban, Darius Rucker, Lauren Elena, Pink, Thomas Rhett, Camila Cabello, Selena Gomez, Tim and Faith, the list goes on and on. In 2017, she took home a Grammy for Best Contemporary Christian Performance and Song with her fellow co-writer, Hilary Scott. Please welcome our guest for today, Emily Wiseman. What up, Emily? How are you? Good, how are you? I'm so good. It's so good to see you. I feel like I haven't seen you in person forever. I know it's been a minute. I couldn't even tell you when it was. I um, couldn't even either. But the good thing is, is we are doing a little writer's camp coming up here soon, which I'm so sure. stoked about. I'm so excited when I found out that you were the person who was going to be on it. I was like, stoked. I was like, yeah. I already don't know a ton of the people. I only know no. like one of them. So I was like, heck yeah, it's going to be great. Me too. I'm so excited. But we are here to talk about you. So I want to go way back to the beginning. You, well, I guess Nashville early beginning, you were a songwriting major at Belmont. Mm -hmm. So what did that mean? Like what kind of classes do you take in a songwriting, like having a songwriting major at Belmont? Well, like it evolved throughout the years. So freshman year, you take commercial songwriting one, like really like freshman year, you did a bunch of just basic classes everybody has to take and you take like yep. one song my class is called commercial songwriting one and you just go you just kind of I don't know it's like how do you teach songwriting it's like they kind of went back over basic structure of songs and things that right. you know we all kind of know but just you know it, it was a good refresher and it's, sometimes it's just good to put things in like tangible a tangible state for you to review you know totally yeah. totally older like the older you got so like junior year senior year you started going into these really hands-on classes and we had um like one class where they would play us um snippets of like tv shows or movies and we'd have to our assignment would be to write a song to that scene in the movie or the tv show and then our homework was writing the songs and recording them and then putting them on iMovie with the scenes they gave us and we're showing the class our song that we wrote for the movie or TV or there was another class where they put us in groups of like two or three to co-write songs and then we took a little field trip down to Universal or Sony or something like that and we would get to pitch the song we wrote in class to like Jim Catino I think one year my class did that so yeah it was just it was that kind of thing it was lots of like one time we had to go to an art museum and pick a piece of art at the Frist and write a song that was inspired by that piece of art and then bring it back to class and you'd play your song for the class either live or recording. And then the class would just discuss the song and like what they liked about it, what we could maybe work on for next time. And so it was definitely like, it got more fun the deeper into it you got because it was very hands-on and you kind of learned by doing that. No kidding. Also like, it seems really vulnerable to be able to like write that much and then have the whole class discuss it. Yeah. And the whole class is like very entitled to an opinion on it. And you're like, it's definitely like a pride thing. Like you (laughs) you have to like really kind of hold it together. If the class did not love your song that day, like sit there like crying about it. You just have to write the next one. So it was really great, but everybody was so encouraging and we're all there to, you know, build each other up. And I, I remember having really good experiences with it, but yeah, very vulnerable for sure. It was terrifying. Honestly, I have butterflies walking into every class. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. When did you know that like songwriting was what you wanted to do? 
I don't know, I was like 11 years old and my dad wrote songs and I just really wanted to bond with him. So when I was 11, I wrote a song and I've been playing guitar and like learning songs and guitar for a couple of years, like since I was yeah. probably nine. Yeah. My dad bought a bunch of instruments for Christmas one year and none of the other kids like picked them up, but I was like, oh, thanks dad. I love you dad. Thanks for the good, thanks for the guitar. Can you show me some chords? And yeah. he like, you know, I loved connecting with him on that. And so I wrote a song when I was like 11 and he cried. And I just remember being obsessed with that feeling of like writing something that, you know, you, especially when you're 11 years old, you look at your parents and think, yeah, beautiful, like strong tower of just so to see my dad be moved in a place by a song I wrote. It was, it was like a dopamine shot. It was like so addicting. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can have that effect on people if I write songs. Like, and it just made me want to keep writing songs. So um ah. yeah I could come home every day and write something and show my dad and it was like our way of bonding but it very quickly I very quickly locked into this mode of just like chasing down that like puzzle like putting that puzzle yeah. together that would just like completely make a grown man cry basically my grown strong ass dad cry you know what I mean and love it I was like That's man good. so I was just hooked and I was I, I don't know i didn't really think about doing anything else. I mean, I just thought about going to medical school for a minute, but then I was like, who am I kidding? I love music. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I, I need to go do that. And so I don't know. I really don't know what I was thinking. That period of my life is kind of a blur. I feel like I kind of just jumped off the cliff and you probably yeah. relate to that. I mean, at some point we're all a little psycho for committing our lives to making music. Like that's so crazy, you know? So really, really you kind of just have to have a, I don't give a crap moment and just start and just yeah. dive in you know you totally do what was it like to win a grammy you won a <laughs> grammy i think everybody who's in the music industry artists songwriters it's on our bucket list to win a grammy and you've done that like how exciting was the award show what was going through your yeah. brain i mean nothing was going through my brain i was terrified i was like i could not believe that i was there i was just so I mean, I was starry eyed for sure, you know? And yeah. I sick to my stomach. I mean, it's the sickest to my stomach I've ever felt. And you're honestly like, I remember right before they were about to call the, like they were announcing like the nominees and stuff. And I remember sitting there and thinking like, dead puppies, bombs, blah, blah, blah. Just like about terrible things because, you know, you're trying to like just make yourself not so overly excited and just spastic and I'm just thinking about all these sad things and like you know it's just so I don't cry and have a total meltdown and um yeah they called it and I just could not I was literally I could not believe it wow that's like it's just incredible. you can't even describe that moment you just cannot believe it's happening and you're like yeah no kidding you, I don't know it was this moment it was the first day of like the most pressure I've ever put on myself in my entire life of like three, four years of just straight me putting pressure on myself. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I think like I was so young and there were so many people there who had been writing songs decades longer than I have and have been at the Grammys decades more times than I have and have never stood on that stage actually. But here I am like two years in my publishing deal standing on a stage thinking, oh no, unless this happens again, this is a total fluke. You know what I mean? And so it's really like, it is beautiful, but, um, and I'm very grateful for it. And it's cool to think that from that day on, like I'm forever Emily Wiseman Grammy award winning songwriter. It, it's so crazy to think that that's what goes through your head compared to being like, yeah. I've been doing this for two years. This is easy. I got this. I'm winning a Grammy, but I would be the same way. It's like, well, now I have to do this again. Well, now I have to do it again. Otherwise at the like, bar. Foster. And everybody's like, wow. Well, and I'm like yeah I'm literally laying in my bed at night thinking I suck I suck I suck oh. I didn't write a Grammy award-winning song today and I suck and it was it's never gonna you know what I mean and so it's yeah but you need to realize that 99% of humans on the planet have I never know. or will never write a Grammy award-winning song <laughs> we're already in that like upper echelon of writers on the planet I know I know it's it's I'm so grateful for it for so many reasons. And it, it really was a huge turning point in my career, but also personally, I mean, I was going off the rails a little bit. I was raised in church and stuff and 
around that time we wrote that song. It, I mean, it was a gospel song, Christian song, and I didn't really care about God when we wrote it. So to win a Grammy for a song about God, and I didn't even care about God when it was happening. It was definitely um, the first day in like a new beginning faith-wise because it, oh, cool. I had growing up in church, it was like I was such a performance-based person and I was being able to experience this like monumental rewarding thing. Um, I don't know. It was very much a, hey, hey kid, I want you up here. You didn't necessarily do anything to deserve it. I want you here. You know what I mean? And it was, I don't know, it breathed a lot of beauty back into my relationship with God because yeah. um, it became more about like his love for me rather than all the performance-based bullshit I'd let myself get wrapped up in my entire life, you know? So Absolutely. If that's not a sign of just like, yeah, hey, listen to this, then I don't know what it is. Like, you're just getting started. Like, yeah, like, on the ride or you're not, you know what I mean? And so I'm very, very grateful for it. And I also, it really, you know, helped me learn to find my mountaintop moment. Totally. And it's not always going to be award shows. Like how many times in a year do, does an award show happen? And this year, I mean, it's so weird. I it's have so weird. Here. Yeah. So weird. So it's like somebody told me one time they're like, you got to find your mountaintop moment that keeps you going in the mundane, like mm -hmm. on the days when award shows aren't happening or EP yeah. or album releases aren't happening. And so mine is getting a demo back. You know what I mean? And knowing okay. that it sounds so freaking good, it did not exist that morning. Yep. And now there's all this new hope and new opportunity about what could happen. Like, where's the song gonna land? What's gonna happen? Getting that it? new energy oh, into. Exactly. Exactly. It's like a burst of new energy. And for me, that's my mountaintop moment is driving around listening to that. You know what I mean? And so if I can hold on to that, the Grammys are nice and I'm so thankful for them, but um, it definitely helps relieve the pressure of like, oh my gosh, it has to happen again. And I'm a total fraud, you know? Absolutely. There's nothing like the feeling of driving around listening to a new demo. I love that feeling. I know. So, I mean, okay. You've obviously won a Grammy for that will, but do you have a song that you've written that you are most proud of? Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Lindsay, don't do this to me. I, I mean, I know um, it's, it's, it's a hard choice, but you know, something <laughs> that you've written that you're just like, I am super proud of that. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm super proud of that Lennon Stella song I wrote, Older Than I Am, mm -hmm. or Helped Write with Captain Cuts and Skylar of Stone Street. That was like, that was a really, really cool moment because we were there to write for Lennon. It was like a camp. I wasn't writing the camp show stoppers that week, you know? And I was like, dang it. I, I want to like give her something that she can, that will help add to her story and her artistry. Yeah. You know, I want to serve her as an artist. And so, yeah, we started writing a song that day that was eh. And, um, I just took a walk because I was like frustrated with myself for not thinking of something better. <laughs> I ran into like her A and R girl, and I was like, "Hey, what hasn't Lennon really talked about on the record yet?" And she was like, "Well, she just kind of feels like her she didn't really have that much of a childhood because she got famous so young. You know, she wasn't able to do. She kind of just had to grow up really fast." And um, I looked at my phone, and I had this title, "Older Than I Am." Yeah, we wrote it in like an hour. It was like really easy and beautiful and fun. But the most rewarding part of it was that later that night, we all went to dinner and her a &R was like, Lennon, you got to hear the song they wrote for you today. You'll love it. And we played it for her. She went um, in the corner of like the parking lot of this Mexican restaurant in Cabo. And she's like listening to the song and she came back. She just had tears streaming down her eyes. Like, thank you guys so much. Like, this is exactly what I needed. And it was just this really cool moment of feeling like I was proud to have done my job that day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which was as a songwriter to serve an artist um, in a way that, you know, I think she, she said herself, like she was kind of too close to the situation to mm -hmm. really dive into it without it being a really, really painful experience. Right. So for us to be able to do that for her in that moment was, I don't know. It just felt like a very proud moment as a writer. Like I was doing what God made me to do. Really fulfilling that purpose. Yeah, it was very like purposeful. And she, I mean, she's just such a nice, kind, magical, caring person. So to be able yeah. to, you know, be a part of that was fun. That's amazing. So you write in so many different genres. 
I am curious, like when you walk into a ride, obviously when you're at a camp, like a camp for Lennon or something, you're focused writing for a specific thing. But when you walk into a ride in Nashville, for instance, do you always have like, or even in LA, do you always have like a genre in mind, an artist in mind, yourself in mind, or do you just kind of see some days where it goes? Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of different every day. I definitely don't try to like push my own project on, you know, other people all the time, but there are certain groups of people that it's kind of known, like, okay, we'll probably try and get something for me today, unless there's like a publisher called us that morning and said, yo, so-and-so is looking for a song and, you know, whatever. But typically, like, if it's just like a normal day, like going to write, unless it's with an artist, I, I really am kind of these days just about writing a great idea. And yeah. my publisher, when I first got signed, Rusty, was like, um, he always said, like, great song, great ideas make great songs. He's like, you can write the crap out of an okay idea, and it'll be a really good song. But if you write the crap out of a great idea, it's going to be a freaking phenomenal song. And so, yeah, I just, I think it always starts with the idea. Um, that's how I tend to approach it. And, um, yeah, when in doubt, I just do that. And whatever the song ends up being, at least it's going to be great. So no matter who it's great for, I mean, I think that all kind of come out in the wash, but yeah, I just want whatever it is to be great. You know, Mm -hmm. you know, we've been, we've known each other for years. I love you so much. We've written together a lot. And I always in the back of my mind, I'm like, why isn't Emily an artist? Like she's beautiful. She's so club and talented. She can write, she can sing. Like, why doesn't she want to be an artist? And I remember I asked you this like years ago and you're like, ah, I just want to do the writer thing. So when was the moment where you were like, okay, okay, I got to do this. Um, I mean, good Lord. I, I don't know that it was as much of a moment as it was like a period of time to keep it really short. Things that happen in threes for me are like, mm-hmm. you probably have something like this where, yeah, you know, call it a superstition, call it like a spiritual sign. I don't know. But for me, it's definitely a sign of like, if something happens in threes, I really start paying attention. I just feel like somebody is trying to tell me. Totally. I got a I got a Christian pop and country record deal offer all in the same week, and um, it just kind of like it was back in like 2015, and I was like, okay, weird, like three, and it wasn't for like a specific genre. It was just kind of like three different labels over the course of a week in three different genres asked me if I would be down to make a record with them, and my answer to all of them was no, but it definitely planted the seed in my head of like, oh no, I was like, what's going on? Cause I had in legal writing, I was never gonna be an artist. Like in my publishing deal, we said, there was no artist language in it because, you know, I, I really wanted to brand myself as someone who was a servant to other artists. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't want artists like you, like if we were writing, I didn't want you to think, are we gonna write for me or Emily? Like I wanted you to know that I was there for you that day mm-hmm. and have no doubt in your mind about that, you know? So that's kind of was my approach. And, and then, I don't know, I just had some people in my life who had been telling me to just do that for so long. Their tune started changing a little bit and that paired with the three um, opportunities in one week paired with just this like weird shift in willingness in me. I don't know, it was like a bunch of things that kind of created this perfect storm of like, okay, let me sit down and write something and not think about totally you know when I write it not think about chasing a lady antebellum idea you know what I mean yeah Yeah. what that even sound like I don't even know and so when I sat down and did that I mean it took like a year honestly to write the first one that was like wow this is mine so I kind of just did it like here and there simultaneously but one day I wrote one that I was like damn it this is my song yeah yeah it just kind of like confirmed that it was something I was supposed to do and um ever since then it's just been this like crazy journey of like learning how to balance my ego with my belief in myself and freaking you know just you know how it is I mean the the mental game of being an artist is absolutely it is is a thing it is definitely a thing it's and it's different every day it's an emotional roller coaster it is it takes constant navigation yes absolutely but you are doing it so beautifully and I'm just so proud of you as a fellow 
female in this town. It's just been amazing watching you grow and spread your wings and still write in the community. You know, your EP, Not Afraid to Say Goodbye, is so good. Thank you so much. And you're so sweet. Like, you've always been one of the nicest, most supportive people I've ever met. And artists have... I'm not talking about anybody in particular. I'm really talking about myself. I've, I learned this about myself being an artist the last year is me, 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 me is very easy. It's, it's a very easy thing to slip it into. Is. I've never known you to be that way ever. Like you've just always been so outward turned. And I mean, if you're an artist and you're interviewing other artists on your on the internet every week. You know what I mean? Well, I just like lifting each other up. I think in our community, specifically like this town it just is such an environment for that and I think that you know uh, high tides make higher ships what's the saying I I, rising tides make higher ships whatever it is but I believe that we do this constantly yeah (laughs) no we totally do I disagree I've always appreciated that about you you're I can't say a bad thing about you literally or anybody else say I love you so much. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes to come on Living Well. Everybody needs to go check out her music. She's written songs for a million people, but definitely go check out her EP first because it's so good and it's brand new. And um, I can't wait to see you in a few days. I know. I'll see you Tuesday. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Awesome, girl. Thank you. (laughs) Bye. That girl is just so talented. She's written songs for so many artists and it's been so inspiring just watching her blossom into her own artist career while still being a songwriter. And so while we're focusing on songwriters right now for Living Well, I uh, I knew we needed to have her on. But now guys, as we always take time every week to focus on positive news because there's just so much going on in our world right now and we're all feeling so much that I always think it's good to highlight a few positive news stories. So here are the Wellisms of the week. Wellism number one. Ocean researchers are now turning plastic waste into something people can wear. The Ocean Cleanup, which was officially started one year ago, has created their first line of products from ocean waste, and they are pairs of sunglasses. The frames are made from waste recovered from the ocean, while the lenses have full UV protection. All proceeds go to the Ocean Cleanup's nonprofit, and for every pair sold, 24 football fields worth of ocean will be able to be cleaned from debris. That's incredible. Sunglasses and we're cleaning our oceans. I love it. Wellism number two. 11 year old Callie Danish from Morristown, New Jersey has been using her creativity to make gratitude flags for veterans and healthcare workers in her area. Each flag is hand painted by Callie herself and also includes an inspirational message for support. Callie has made 2000 flags to date and even has her own Facebook page to display her own work. As part of her creative project, she has raised over $1,000 for Help Morris Now, which donates food and clothing to those in need in her area. Callie says she loves to use her creative talents to spread kindness to those in need. Callie, we see you. Thank you so much. You are 11 years old and you are doing so much good for this world already. Thank you. Wellism number three. 21-year-old Chris Nickett crossed the Ironman triathlon finish line at 16 hours, 46 minutes, and nine seconds. He set a new world record and became the first competitor with Down syndrome to complete the race. Chris spent four to eight hours training every single day leading up to the race. And even though he hit a few challenges on the course, he was determined to make history. Chris hopes that this helps encourage other kids with Down syndrome and hopes to help change people's view on what people with Down syndrome can do. Chris, you are an inspiration. Thank you so much. That is such an amazing story. All right, you guys, thank you so much for listening to episode seven. I guess watching episode seven of Living Well. We are focusing on songwriters right now. I am actually holding a songwriting course with Adam Roa. I I just believe so much in the power of songwriting and how much it helps us tap into our own emotions. And when we're all feeling so much right now in our world, I think it's just an amazing gift. So if you'd like to check out any of that, we'll leave the links below. It's called Right From The Heart. But otherwise, we'll see you next week. I love you guys so much. Bye.